They've flown their nuclear status and threatened the world. Russia has touched on nuclear weapons dozens of times over the past few years. The Kremlin constantly boasts of successful tests. From two screens, Russian propagandists constantly tell Russians that the whole world should tremble with fear before Russia, because it has nuclear missiles. The most unbelievable that I find it more likely that it all ends up with nuclear strike rather than other way. To my dismay on one hand and on the other hand, I understand as it is. Somehow later, propagandists themselves renounce their words. Of course, they are not saying they were wrong. Instead, they begin to justify themselves. I remember I asked Minister Shoigu a few years before this operation. We were just talking. I asked if he did find nuclear war theoretically possible. He said, absolutely impossible. For one reason, it will be the humanity's last war. But it's too late. The idea of nuclear war has already been sown. It comes to the point that retirees who need to rest and care of their grandchildren are jealously discussing which part of the planet to destroy. Where is Armad can reach? How do you think? <laughs> it's intercontinental. It can go between continents. I think it can hit wherever we need. Right, correct, wherever we need. It can fly 18,000 kilometers. 18,000 kilometers. And what about those poles? It can go over South and North Pole. And what's the plus? American air defense system works over the North Pole, but not over the South. It's about a Sarmat missile. Recently, Russian television told about spectacularly successful task of this intercontinental ballistic missile. Putin first announced this project in 2018, and by the end of 2022, such missiles are supposed to be on a combat duty. At least, that's what the Kremlin says. The propagandists, of course, could not miss this news break, and as always, they began to threaten the world and talk about a rocket that seems to have no analogs. Although they say so about all their weapons. Recently, for example, they decided to frighten Great Britain with their new toy. Why threaten boundless Russia when you're sitting on a tiny island? It's so small that one missile is enough to drown it forever. It's all calculated already. The propagandists went even further. They began counting how long Kremlin missiles would fly to Europe's largest cities. There is no Sarmat in Kaliningrad yet, but we've calculated that from Kaliningrad to Berlin, 106 seconds, to Paris, 200 seconds. You ask about London, 202 seconds. Um, mm, that we need to show him this picture. Hey guys, here is the picture. What will you do, huh? Where, huh? The end, good evening, good night. Let them think, give them a stopwatch, it serves them right. No other way. The distance from Kaliningrad to Berlin is 525 kilometers, to Paris 1,402 kilometers, to London 1,411. So according to the slide shown to the Russians by propagandists, the speed of the Sarmat missile is 5,000 meters per second. This is 14 times faster than the speed of sound. But for some reason, the propagandists forgot to mention the United States. It is declared that the United States is the main enemy of Kremlin puppets. So, according to Russian calculations, the Sarmat missile fired from Kaliningrad would hit Washington 23 minutes after launch. This number is impressive. There are no analogs, as they say, although, wait a minute. The United States also have intercontinental ballistic missiles, in particular LGM-30 Minuteman. There is a lack of information about it on public domain. It's not surprising, because Americans do not intimidate the whole world with nuclear weapons as often as Putin does. But from what can be found on the Internet, such a missile released from Washington will hit Moscow in 18 minutes after lunch. So does Sarmat really have no analogs? However, Putin, as he told more than once, is not going to be the first to use nuclear weapons. Several years ago, when asked about Russia's nuclear weapons, he said that there is no preemptive nuclear strike in their defense strategy, so Russia is not going to be the one who shoots first. 
Their concept is counterattack. In simple words, Russia spots a launch to its territory and sets off missile in response. Aggressor, on... Aggressor must know that the retribution is inevitable, that it will be destroyed, and we are the victims of aggression, and we as martyrs will go to heaven, and they will just die. Right after the launch, an intercontinental ballistic missile goes outside the atmosphere to gain maximum speed and reduce the risk of interception. In fact, they fly almost in open space. And even at that height, they can be knocked down. The operation of anti-missile system is a complex mechanism. However, in short, it can be described as follows. The satellite captures the launch, ground radar tracks the trajectory and transmits data to the units that shoot down such nuclear missiles. In the United States, for example, ground-based interceptor missiles are responsible for this. They are capable of shooting down intercontinental ballistic missiles at a distance of up to 5,000 kilometers and at an attitude up to 2,000 kilometers. Such complexes are located in particular in Alaska and California. The missiles are designed to destroy the threat beyond the Earth's atmosphere. There are similar systems in Russia. For example, around Moscow at one time there was an A-135 complex. To replace this outdated system, the Kremlin decided to develop a new one. In fact, the new project dates back to the Soviet times, and its implementation has been accompanied by traditional claims that the system has no analogs. The new protective complex got the creative name of A-235. It even showed how it can hit targets. However, it was not tested on rockets, but on satellites. Therefore, the U.S. Department of Defense called it the anti-satellite weapon. Whether Russia can really resist intercontinental ballistic missiles is classified information. Instead, Putin promises a counterattack, of course, if he has enough time. We make sure that the attack is on the territory of Russia, only after that we strike back. It's a counter-uncoming strike. Why uncoming? Because their missiles are flying towards us and ours towards the aggressor. Today Russia is the world leader in the number of nuclear warheads. It has an arsenal of 5,977 deadly units. The total potential of NATO countries is 5,939 warheads. The Kremlin's nuclear missiles are based on launch seals, submarines, strategic bombers and vehicle carriers. According to various sources, the Kremlin has about 1,500 warheads on constant alert. However, it is not just intercontinental ballistic missiles, it can also be a tactical weapon. For example, the Soviet P-1 anti-aircraft gun with a range up to 47 kilometers, or the Iskander tactical missile system with a range about 500 kilometers, can fire nuclear projectiles. And Putin spoke about these forces a few days after the invasion of Ukraine. Senior officials of the leading NATO countries also allow aggressive statements against our country. Therefore, I order the Minister of Defense and the Chief of the General Staff to transfer the containment forces of the Russian army to a special mode of combat duty. As you can see, Putin is lying again. Earlier he said that Russia would deploy and use nuclear weapons only if another country strikes Russian territory with the same weapons. Now, however, Putin finds statements from NATO leaders strong enough reason to hold his finger on the nuclear trigger. The West is trying to keep Putin from using nuclear weapons. The whole world understands this will be the beginning of the end. But Putin doesn't care against the background of what is happening. Russia with nuclear weapons is very similar to a monkey with grenade. No one knows what this monkey will do next. Thank you.